Till freedom is a rumor. I've spent a lifetime doing stories, but I've also lived one. Can I tell that without being self-promotional or hyped up? Is it a story anyone would want to watch? I sure hope so. From activism to journalism, from rock and roll radio to network television, from crises in America to an immersion in South Africa. It's got celebrity glitz and investigative substance and the worldwide whirlwind of media adventures and submerged hopes. This is a film about journalism through the eyes of a journalist who can't stand most of what passes for journalism. I blinked again and suddenly 1960 had become 60. Another marker, a new transition point, ignition with tuition to erudition, zero to 60. Watch me fly in the flash of that blinking eye. This is a film about one media maven's attempt to challenge the news business as a media maker and a media critic. Unfortunately, uh, as corporate mergers increased, as the New York Times became a bigger corporation, it's been less sensitive to these issues. And we're here out of respect for the New York Times, not because we denounce the journalists who work here. We're here because we're concerned uh, that truth is being sacrificed uh, to corporate bottom line concerns. My own navigation system steers me on into destinations unknown, into life, act three. Oh, say, can you see? It's a personal subjective chronicle ranging over four decades of work. The career built more on a sense of mission than money. It's offered up as one model for how independent journalism can raise deeper questions. Here on WBCN, Boston. News Dissector, Dan Shecker. I became a news dissector when one of the DJs who I was writing the news for told me he couldn't read what I had written and I should read it myself. And then he, he, had, he had to go to the toilet. So I was thrown on the air and he introduced me. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the news inspector, the news digester, the news dissector. A news dissector, that sounded pretty unique and good. So I, I basically latched onto it and I'm still known as the news dissector in journalism all around the world. And now write a blog under that name. Yet I was changing too. Marriage and a child does that. I needed to find a real career in journalism. A stint as a Harvard Neiman Fellow in journalism helped. Soon I was on my way. One of the stories we covered back in 1960 was the student sit-in movement in the South. One of the activists in North Carolina had gone to Clinton, so I was particularly interested and went to a press conference in Harlem where the students in that movement started telling us about what was going on and about segregated lunch counters and the fight against racism and the emergence of the civil rights movement. If I was on picket lines in, in the Bronx uh, calling for a boycott of the Woolworth stores, which had uh, segregated lunch counters and through that experience became exposed to the civil rights movement and some of its greatest leaders. My claim to fame in the civil rights movement may have been organizing its only dance-in. It was my first media protest too, desegregating the Buddy Dean TV teen dance show live on the air in Baltimore with interracial dancing, pretty risque back in 1963. That incident, as director John Waters later admitted to me, inspired Hairspray, the movie and Broadway show. I met Martin Luther King and even played a small role in organizing the March on Washington. I've actually held on to the newspapers of that day, which incidentally were more concerned with a Negro invasion of Washington than the fight for freedom. Real journalism for me meant an immersion in the story, experiencing it with the people on the front lines, reporting from the inside out, not the top down. In 1966, I won a fellowship as an assistant to the mayor of Detroit. Believe it or not, another fellow was none other than Dick Cheney. I was fired when a local rock band strayed into obscenities on the air. I'll spare you what they were. I thought my TV career was over, but actually it had just begun. ABC. I had made it into the Big Ten of Big TV, 
winning awards and making good money, but it was also making me crazy. There is a certain amount of irony here that Schechter's not unaware of. I work in television, and of course I'm trying to get my message out on television. Is that a contradiction? So be it. I went to this Al Jazeera conference in Doha, and there was a professor from the Arab world who studies the media globally, and he's saying, you know, I came to see that the American people have less choice, have less information than we have. That American media is not really covering the world. What did that make you think? Do you agree with that, by the way? Where are you from? I'm from Africa. From Africa. Do you think Africa is covered well in the American news? Not all of them. Yeah. Okay. South Africa Now, which is a news program produced in this country by a gutsy team of journalists who sometimes take great risks to get their news footage into this country. Mr. Nelson Mandela will be released at the Victor Verstaat prison at about 3 p.m. Covering South Africa put us in the lead in covering the Nelson Mandela story. I was privileged to document Mandela's trip in America. It was like being on a rock tour. One minute I was on a stage with him in Yankee Stadium. I am a Yankee. This is uh, Danny Schechter of Global Vision and the Media Channel at the Landless People's Camp outside of Johannesburg, outside of the summit, trying to get their voices heard. Daniel Schechter, a self-described refugee from Network News, was once an award-winning producer for CNN and ABC. Now, from an office just a few blocks away from the media giants, he's waging a guerrilla war against what he calls the downward slide of mainstream news. At this recent UN forum on the future of television, Schechter takes on media tycoon Rupert Murdoch, owner of the Fox Television Network. Your newscast has a feature called The World in a Minute. And what that does is it gives you a 10 second blip on various international crises and the like. There are no more documentaries on primetime television on any of the networks, including Fox, to my knowledge. Uh, don't you see a problem here at all? Newspapers don't seem to review books critical of their own limitations. I'm trying to be a journalist, I don't even know what that is anymore in many ways. You know, I'm trying to inform people in a medium where, you know, everybody says, you know, make it entertaining. From the 60s to 60, feeling better than I should, forward ever, backward never. Blink on, O oh ship of fate, blink on and bring it on. Thank you. Okay, so I'm no Allen Ginsberg, but he was a friend and an influence. I was honored to salute the late poet at a massive tribute at a New York cathedral. He was also my media hero for the reasons I cited. Before logos and branding, he branded himself. Always there with the news we never knew. The anchor of GNN, the Ginsburg News Network. The poet ahead of the news with the times never quite able to catch up. We miss you, Alan. Newscaster Walter Cronkite was among the many prominent journalists who supported us. The issues that led to the creation of this unique global resource and the crisis that's facing all of us who work in and care about journalism and the media are so profound that I simply felt compelled to tape this message so that you would know that I am with you in spirit at least. We can make a difference in this world and that's I guess the message I'm preaching. Uh, is anybody listening? Knock knock. Hello. I know that it's it's problematic because I'm doing something that Jesus. This guy's trying to get across the street. Till freedom is a rumor. Elvis Presley. O.J. Simpson abandoned Baden. Order now. What we want, what we need, what we want, what we need. But do we even know who plans to see? You think the media works for you, but it's a job for them.